Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Costa Rica Crypto. Today I am sitting down with Damien King from Puma Health. And uh, Damien, it's really nice to speak to you. It's kind of like when two worlds collide. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge fitness buff myself. And of course, to see somebody building an app that incentivizes fitness on EOS.io, I'm excited about it. Um, do you want to kind of give me a little bit of introduction and maybe tell us a little bit about what Pummel actually does and kind of yeah. where you came from and how you came to this point? Cool. Well, first of all, Matt, it's awesome to be here. And it's fantastic to hear that you love both EOS.io and health and fitness. Uh, it's uh, the perfect storm um, because, yeah, our app's all about bringing those two, uh, I suppose, things together. And, um, yeah, we're tied on PUML Better Health, and it's all about making the world move more. So we have this sort of massive, audacious plan to create a mass adoption mobile app that helps motivate people. So we sort of have two key pillars in our platform. Um, the first is how do you motivate people? And we do that through incentivizing them to complete healthy, active challenges, uh, like step challenges, like going to the gym, uh, participating in yoga classes and things like that, and also getting your heart rate up, so heart rate challenges as well. And on the other side of things, we're a data company, uh, so we believe everyone should own their own data, not just financial data, but actually your health and fitness data is extremely valuable. And a lot of people don't quite understand the value of that data yet, but over the next five years, we're going to be here to help bring your data together and help show you that it's worth uh, a lot of money um, and more importantly that uh, you know it can essentially uh, save your life or at least bring you notifications that there's been a degradation in your health and perhaps uh, you know you need to make some changes in your lifestyle so that you can age gracefully. I love it. I actually wasn't aware that you guys were doing the data monetization part and I think that We've got this like changing economy. We've got AI coming in. A lot of things are being automated. People are losing their jobs on the regular. Um, and I've worked with other projects that are monetizing data. So that is super cool. What, what types of data are you going to be monetizing? Is that ultimately going to be like the heart rate, steps, and how are you linking that? What devices are you going to be using? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. So yeah, we're definitely um, very bullish about data. We think it's like the future. And, um, you know, just picking up on what you said about artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, we're seeing huge uh, advancements in both of those uh, technologies at the moment. And uh, there's a lot of data sets that actually base just on European data. Um, so one of the things that's going to be super valuable um, from our perspective is being able to create data sets across the whole world, particularly in countries like Asia that hasn't had sort of data sets before. Um, and we believe that, uh, you know, people will be able to exchange their data, uh, you know, not only for discounts on health insurance and things like that, but they'll be able to opt in to share the data with research companies that are primarily looking for certain data around a demographic, a location, and uh, a certain history. Um, and our data uh, is going to be quite rich. We're going to be building that up, like I said, over time. But um, right now we've uh, integrated with Fitbit um, and we've also got Garmin data coming through by Apple Health. Um, and we're also obviously integrating on the Android Health thing as well. And some of the, the two standard sort of data points are going to be number of steps, uh, heart rate, um, but also we have this wonderful way of checking in to a location and seeing, I suppose, that a user has actually participated at, say, a class, like a fitness class, or done a gym workout, et cetera, as well. And so some of that data uh, at the moment is just performing an activity, but in the future, we're also going to bring in sort of more enriched data around what you actually did when you went to the gym or what you did when you checked in at like a physical center. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of data there, but all the things that you can expect right now are there. And um, yeah, we had like a really interesting conversation with uh, um, a wearable company. So they're actually producing clothing, um, one that has an ECG that's built into the top of the garment and also a blood pressure monitor on the arm. And uh, although that sounds pretty sci-fi right now, um, the cost of that was only 400 US and you got about a thousand washes. And um, yeah, we believe in the future, you know, your kids are going to be wearing smart garments and smart garments and active wear is going to be incorporated in, you know, a very short period of time. We're going to have more data than ever before. 
You know, that's funny. I'm, I'm actually kind of embarrassed. I, I knew that it was kind of a challenge application. I didn't realize that you guys were going to be so strong in the data. And I was wondering why this hasn't happened yet, because I'm absolutely familiar with how important that data could be to um, the modern world of science, to people kind of understanding their own health patterns. And the fact that you guys are going to allow people to monetize that and use that and kind of return to the user, have kind of user own data, that's beautiful. That is super cool. I've been paying attention to a lot of the, um, the smart clothing as well, because as an athlete myself, it's fantastic to be able to pull that data to give yourself insights, you know, whether it might be your heart rate over the course of a run or a certain activity. Um, I do a lot of kind of anaerobic exercise myself as well as like re weight resistance training. So I've been really paying attention to that and that's a really cool emerging market. How exciting, man. That's fantastic. You might actually be one yeah. of my new favorite dApps on EOS.io. I really think so, that I yeah. just have to pick up there that it was great that you said that, uh, you know, you're an athlete because um, you are an athlete. Uh, but we want everyone to start thinking the same way that you think that, you know, just the same way that people are now thinking that they're their own brand um, and that I think they do, all their data is valuable in the same way we believe everyone's an athlete and that they should be sponsored uh, by someone, um, either a corporate wellness would sponsor you or a gym or perhaps even your family, but the point is like, you're an athlete and you need to monitor your data and you need to see constant improvement with your, with your health. That's incredible. And yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think that that might be the only way, I mean, you can really incentivize people to go to the gym. If I knew that, hey, I'm, I'm gonna you know, potentially have some form of exchange if I wear my heart monitor and I go to the gym and I do a little bit of workout, I can potentially monetize that in the future. Like that's huge. It's the one thing that I really love about blockchain is this ability to be able to monetize your own data. Um, you know, many people, and I've said this before kind of, like we live in this really cool age and it's just starting to emerge right now. So I think you're like right on the cusp of something big. People are just, you know, people in certain countries are, if they have access to a computer or even a smartphone, are for the first time ever um, in various ways using blockchain technology, being able to feed their family. Sometimes that might be playing a game or sometimes it might be doing surveys or whatever else. So that's really, really cool, Damien. Um, I understand that you guys have a bunch of partnerships. Uh, some you're probably not likely able to talk about at this point, but what are the, some of the partnerships that you do have that you are able to talk about? Yeah, so um, we've had like an MVP that's non-crypto um, that's been running for a little while um, here locally in Brisbane, Australia, um, and we've connected in with a number of gyms. Um, and so, yeah, those partnerships have been really important to us because it provided sort of early evidence and early validation on two sorts of things. Um, the first is that we've seen a higher level of engagement. Um, so when we're able to create an incentification, as in you join a gym, um, but when you check in on one of our tablets, if you do that uh, a certain number of times per week over a period of time, then you will be given a reward. Um, and people love it. <laughs> We've seen like 150,000 check-ins um, in the last 12 months or so, um, just with a small number of gyms in our local area. So I think that validation has been really important about, you know, will people actually want to uh, participate in this type of DAP? And the answer is yes. Um, you know, that reward and uh, loyalty piece certainly works in the fitness space. But more important to that, we've been able to see that you can change behavioral patterns. And that's something that we're really, um, I suppose, passionate about. And uh, we are talking with um, some schools now as well um, and trialing how that we can try and create healthy behavior amongst uh, teenagers uh, while they're still younger because the evidence shows that obviously people, uh, you know, not moving as much as they used to. Um, we've got things like eSports, we've got 5G coming out, we've got VR, we've got AR, we've got these amazing uh, technology platforms that have come out, but at the same time, it's potentially stopping people move or exercise the same way they used to. Um, and as a father and someone with kids, um, you know, I see my kids on iPads all the time. Um, we think that starting these partnerships with schools and youth is actually super important. Um, and we're talking with the government here in Australia and a couple of states um, about, you know, creating initiatives and running pilot programs with us that predominantly try and you know, leverage the relationship with schools and, and younger kids and, yeah. and trying to get them to, you know, complete these healthy challenges and get a feel for what it's like to, to exercise and feel good. Um, and ultimately, you know, 
we scientifically know the benefits of that, you know, exercising 30 minutes, um, you know, two to three times a week will definitely reduce the risk of things like cancer and lifestyle diseases. Yeah, I see it as a win-win all around. It's interesting that you've already run that pilot um, and kind of proven your product market fit, which as a you know previous entrepreneur is a term that I'm sure you're really quite familiar with. Um, cool, man. That's fantastic. I had, I mean, I'm embarrassed. I should have, you know, I did a little bit of research prior, but I thought it was mostly a challenge-based rewards app. The fact that you guys are monetizing data um, and allowing people to be able to do that, um, that's really cool. I'm definitely going to be watching. I want to ask you a question, um, and this might be a little bit of a tougher question, right? Obviously, you had your kind of pre-blockchain beta, and then you brought it into the blockchain world. With EOS IO right now, I noticed, and this is changing this year, um, there is a little bit of blockchain friction, right, in between kind of the user experience um, and just people kind of onboarding people into that program. What are kind of your plans to deal with some of that blockchain friction to allow it to be accessible to people who might not be technical? Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's been one of our toughest challenges to try and balance, um, you know, centralization with decentralization. Um, as you know, my background is more traditional entrepreneurship, although you know, I've been involved in crypto for a long time as well. But, um, you know, from a product perspective, um, you know, we can't put up barriers. Uh, there's so many drop-off points, you know, you've got to download the app, there's so much noise, you need to register, you need to go through. Uh, by forcing people to own a EOS account from day one and to enter a private key, there's too much uh, friction and barrier for us. Um, so what we've done is we've developed a virtual EOS account within the app, and so users just simply need to register via a mobile number, um, and we have multi-factor authentication based on that. And we essentially hold the private key um, for those transactions um, up until the point where the user wants to purchase an EOS account. And we've developed a, uh, a platform where they can actually purchase an EOS account uh, directly linked out of our wallet. Um, and then they can obviously enter that private key and, and they'll see more transactions going directly to, to their account. So we've sort of softened the, um, the entry so that straight away you're not <laughs> asking my mum what a private key is. Um, but, you know, we're, we're sort of doing both so that we can um, create adoption of, of, of blockchain. And I really believe that, you know, all of these protocols um, are much like mobile phones in the early days uh, when we did have BlackBerry and Apple and Google and everything else. And, you know, there's probably only going to be two winners, Apple and Google. Um, in my opinion, that's EOS and Ethereum, uh, where obviously Bitcoin is something very different. Um, and yeah, what I love about um, EOS is the fact that, uh, you know, it's quite commercial as well. And a little bit like Apple, where it builds the software and the hardware, um, you know, the voice example of, you know, delivering voice and the protocol is what I would say is the software and the hardware in that scenario. So, um, yeah, look, we're very bullish about uh, getting our app out into as many people as possible and then to have those people adopt the EOS uh, protocol. Um, yeah. So that's something that's important to us. That's brilliant, man. And that's what I'm noticing that a lot of applications are doing. People, Some people are going to hate me for saying this. I'm sorry, but I'm a realist. <laughs> um, and I think that the future of... Adoption is exactly as you said, it's, it's probably going to take custodial wallets with an option to be able to own your own keys. And I just, I say that I understand the importance of owning your own keys. I understand the importance of decentralization. But when we're talking about onboarding masses into an application, there's a certain amount of friction. And the cool thing is, is that um, if all of a sudden you have this little option, it's in the corner, export your private key and you can own your private key and you're still allowed to use scatter or whatever other device to, you know, to connect to it. I think that that's kind of like a little bit of a rabbit hole um, for some people. You know, a lot of people don't know what decentralization is outside. All of a sudden there's this little thing. Well, you know, Adam comes to me and Adam says, well, I own my own, I own my own key. You know, you don't know anything about, I'm going to get pretty curious and I'm going to start looking it up. These people are going to go through a massive rabbit hole. They're going to understand the importance of owning your own key. But you have to you have to make it easy, and the way that you're doing it, I think, yeah. is absolutely brilliant. So, congratulations. yeah, no, you're 100 right, Matt. And I think um, that education piece is going to be sort of you know important for us to actually put in the application. But yeah. if they've already got the DAP and they're using it, then it gives them more reason to go. Well, actually, I'm getting these little tokens. You know, I'm, I'm redeeming them on products and services that are traditional fitness things. But what's this? you know, EOS that I can redeem for or what's this Bitcoin that I can redeem for and that's going to educate them about 
um, cryptocurrency generally, um, and it's going to help educate them about their own sovereignty and control of their own keys. And that's definitely the path we see people go, but I'm a realist as well, and I'm also commercial. I know that um, for us to, to have the best chance of creating a, a mass market product, we need to allow for both. Man, so cool. You've got, it sounds like you've really got it nailed. You've got your ducks lined up in a row. Um, I know that you're going to be launching kind of primarily in Australia to be able to test things out and then you roll out to other markets thereafter. So I think that that's a really smart thing to do as well. Um, and also just kind of on that little private key, like it, it kind of becomes a cool kids club, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Like people like kind of like knowing a little something and then all of a sudden Billy's talked and he's like, yeah, I own my key. Like I, it's going to be like this little private club, club. And I think like a lot of the consumer education will simply come by like, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the secret level in the application where you can have a certain amount of control and leads people down the, down the road. So that's really fantastic. Yeah. Damien. Um, I, I guess the, the, I don't want to keep you too, too long here today because I, I think that it's what you're doing is really cool and I want to make sure that uh, as many people see this video as possible so we won't drown out but we'll do another video maybe a little bit later on where we can talk about our ideals etc um, if you were to say anything to the community right now or if you kind of had um, one call to action what might that be um, yeah right now we've got um, pre-registrations open so uh, yeah come along um, to our website which is puml.io um, you can sign up for pre-registrations um, Join our Telegram. Uh, we're going to run lots of competitions, uh, sort of get sort of people in the idea that we're here for you to actually, uh, you know, do positive things um, and reward you for doing those things. That's ultimately what we're all about. Um, we're going to obviously bring in sponsors to help pay for that. But right now, if you sign up, you become a foundation member, um, and in the future, you'll get sort of unique challenges that other people won't get access to. So it's definitely worth signing up early, coming on, supporting us now. Um, you know, we're, we're on this exciting journey. Um, and at the same time, you know, you can improve your health uh, just by starting to think about, you know, the importance of being active. Just that one thing, um, you know, going for a walk in the morning or, you know, taking the stairs rather than the lift, all those little incremental changes. Um, you know, we're, we're feeling like we're a success if we can get someone to do something like that one day. Absolutely, man. I can't tell you how enthused I am about this because I've been waiting for something like this to come out for a long time. The data monetization, the smart clothing, um, something that I'm very familiar with in the fitness industry. So you can bet that I am going to be watching. I would love to do a follow-up interview with you. This is going to be one of the coolest apps on EOS IO, I have no doubt. So it's really cool to be able to sit down with you in the preliminary stages. I'm going to make sure that I put all your links below. Um, the cool thing about the, you know, the internet and blockchain is that if you want to have a conversation with Damien directly, uh, you can go and check him out on Telegram and you look for all the links below to make sure that you sign up for the pre-registration. Damien, I love it, man. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. I'm actually really hyped. Um, and this is one of the coolest apps that I've seen in a long time. So look forward to following your journey and, uh, and chatting with you again soon. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Matt. It's awesome to be on your show. And um, hey, everyone, all of Matt's fans, just come join us. Um, hopefully you love fitness as much as Matt and we'd, we'd love to have you on this journey as well. You bet. Thank you so much for your time, Damien. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Cheers, mate. Okay.